In this video, we are going to be working with color editor tool. Capture One is famous for this tool. It could be almost an application on its own. It's a very powerful tool, very flexible, and with color editor tool, you can create very precise local color adjustments. You can create masks based on color. You can work specifically with skin tone. It's a really great tool. Okay, so let's create new layer. Let's keep our workflow tidy. I'm going add a new field layer and rename it to color editor. So that way on this layer, we will keep all the adjustments performed with color editor. So now let's move over. We are already within the color tab. So let's move over and let's pick the color editor tool. Let's pull it out and actually let's reduce, let's get rid of tools for the sake of presentation of color editor tool. We have already hidden the browser with the keyboard shortcut command B. So now we can hide tools with the keyboard shortcut command T on a Mac or control T on a PC. So that way I can increase the size of my color editor and you will specifically see what I'm doing. So with color editor, you can either work with the basic version advanced and with the skin tone, you can very precisely work with the skin tone of the model. You can unify the tone. You can use it as a part of your retouch. This is particularly useful when you are working with fashion images or with a female portrait. In case of this fine art portrait, I'm not that concerned in unifying the skin tone. I am very happy with the way the model looks like. In fact, we can select the second icon and if we double click, we will see the image at 100%. We can move around and I don't see any need to affect the color of the skin tones. I am very happy with the way it works with the overall scene. So we are going to be working with the advanced color editor and it is a bit intimidating because nothing is shown here. You have to take action first and sample your first color. So let's click on this little eyedropper icon and that way we can start sampling colors from our image with color editor you can very, very precisely sample particular color and you can work with adjusting this specific color. So let's, for example, click on the background and I'm going to make this background a little bit more blue. I'm going to increase saturation a little bit. So once I have clicked on the background, you can see that I have added a new layer here with this selected color beside the sample, which is visible here enlarged. So this is the original color. If I perform, let's say if I increase brightness, this is the original sample and this is the same color after performing the adjustment. Let's just reset. So this is the sample and these are numeric values for H hue as saturation and L lightness. With these three sliders, I can adjust these values. I can work with hue, saturation, lightness. The first slider smoothness is affecting the gradient. If I will move the slider towards the left hand side, the gradient gets reduced and the edge is getting really sharp. But if I move the slider towards the right hand side, the border, the edge of my color selection is getting smoother. So the transition will be much smoother as well. The default value here is 20. So if I double click on the slider, it will reset to default, which was 20. So if we want to increase saturation, if we want to increase the range of selected color, which is represented here by this little dot, we need to click on the second icon and this will expand the range from the saturation zero from the white color 
in the middle of the circle all the way up to the saturation 100%. So this little dot shows precisely the selected color, the one sampled from the image with the numeric values RGB 18, 27 and 41. And around this is the range of selection of the color that will be affected when we will be performing the adjustment. Very, very handy tool here is the view selected color range. If we tick this little button here, we can see that the range of colors that will be affected if I start manipulating with the sliders is visible. Those colors that are not going to be affected, that are excluded from the selection, by that you can see that uh, the magentas, reds, yellows, oranges, greens, cyans, they are not going to be affected, so they are outside and they are grayed out in the image. If we switch it off again, we see that all those areas that include yellow, green, the skin tones, they are grayed out when we are looking at the preview of the selected color range. So at this point, we can manually narrow down or expand the selection. If I increase the image, let's just maybe zoom in to 100%, I don't want to affect these little purple flowers. I want to focus on the background. I would like to increase saturation of the background, however, without affecting the flowers. So what I need to do is to manually move this little handle towards the left hand side and that way I will be excluding purples from my selection. As you can see this has changed the way the image was grayed out so now I have still the blue color in the background visible however the flowers will be excluded from my selection. So the same if I would like to uh, let's say include the green part of the plants. If I move this handle all the way up to include the greens, you can see how this is affecting the preview and I can this way very, very precisely select colors. I don't want to affect the greens, so I'm just going to move it back and just to include the background, the blue color. So the first slider smoothness, as you remember, we would affect the transition between the colors. With the hue, we can affect the hue of the color. This is my original sample. If I start pushing hue towards the right hand side, you can see that I'm adding warm tones from this very cool navy shade. I went all the way to the magentish blue to much warmer shade. I'm not interested in that at all. So I'm going just to reset it and if I just move it to the left, I will be cooling down. I'm going into this greenish tone. I don't want to really affect hue of my background. I just want to increase saturation slightly a little bit. So we can actually switch it off. So now I'm looking at the image and if I push saturation to the right. We are going for a really crazy effect. Let's just reset and I'm going to push it slightly, maybe around 12. So that way, if I option click on this reset button, you can see before and after I have slightly cooled down the background effect. When you are working with color, when you color grading your images, remember that the final color grade it is a result of these very little, very subtle steps. Never push those sliders in a crazy way. Don't push them into extreme values because it hardly ever gives you any good results. The whole secret is by manipulating with the sliders in a subtle way, building up the effect gradually and the final result. This is always the outcome of using several little steps. So when it comes to lightness, I don't want to either increase or decrease lightness for this color, so I'm going to leave it. So right now we have this first layer with the color I have sampled in the background. Okay, so now let's sample second color. I would like to increase saturation in those blacks a little bit. So let's move back to our 
color picker tool so I'm selecting this icon and I'm clicking within the hair range now I'm going to click again on the second icon this way I will extend the selection the saturation range and I just want to increase saturation slightly little bit so I have pushed the saturation slider to the 12. If I click on the saturation you can see before and after I hope it is visible on your screen. It gives a very subtle touch to the darkest tones in the image. And the last color that I would like to affect is I would like to take care of the greens. I really like the green accent here and I would like to make it stronger. So if we focus on that plant, I need to select the green color. So let's use again the color picker tool let's sample within the green range again let's click on the second icon to extend the selection to extend the saturation range let's zoom out double clicking with the hand cursor tool and now let's just to make sure that the proper range is selected let's make a preview so i'm ticking here view selected color range so everything is fine, the green is selected, we can extend a little bit towards the yellows. Okay, so let's switch it off and I'm going to make the color stronger. So I will push the lightness slider to around 20, maybe a little bit less, 18. This way I've made the greens brighter, which make them pop up stronger and I'm going to push saturation as well. In case of the green I can go a little bit further, maybe around 50. So that way this color starts playing more significant role within our composition. So this is, let's just reduce the tool a bit. So this is the image before working with the green color after and if we option click the reset button we can see before using color editor and after. At this point I would say that I'd like to again decrease saturation of all the colors. Maybe I could add a little bit more touch of the color to those purple flowers. I'm not sure yet at this point. We will be first adding the matte finish and after this I will decide if I would like to get back and work with this purple color or not. At this point I would like to push saturation of the whole image slightly towards negative side. I would like to see those colors a little bit more muted and I don't have to get back to the exposure tab. I can do this directly here in color editor tool. In order to do this click this plus icon. This will give you the layer with generic colors with all the colors. These colors we were sampling manually so that was the background blue, this was the black, this was the green and by hitting the plus we got layer that includes all the colors and any adjustment performed here will affect all the colors in the image. So let's say if I push lightness I will be increasing lightness in all the colors. If I move the other way I will be decreasing lightness overall to all the colors. What I have mentioned, I would like to just decrease saturation in the image. So I'm going to work with saturation slider. Make sure that you have this layer selected that we are affecting all the colors. And I'm going to push it maybe to around negative 33. If I select the numeric value and if I work with arrows on my keyboard, I can work here really precisely. So let's say we leave it at negative 30. So now if I option click, this is my image before working with color editor and after. You can see that this color changes are very subtle, but slowly we are adding up all the little steps and working towards our final color grading. Let's get back to our tools. Command T on a Mac, Control T on a PC. Let's move back with this tool here. Let's get back to our layers. 
So now we can switch off color editor, we can switch off color balance, and this is how the image looked like when we just applied the initial color grade with curves. Let's switch it off. And this was our image after initial adjustments. So at this stage we have our color grading more or less in place. I'm very happy with the colors that I have achieved. Now I will add layers that will be working, that will be targeting clarity and I will create matte effect. And after this I can always get back to those tools that were treating color and I can revisit them and fine tune if there will be any need to do this. So now you know how to work with local color adjustments with color editor tool in Capture One. Let's now move over to the next video and let's take a look at clarity tool. See you in the next clip.